All right, so we have, uh, hopefully you've signed in to Google+, and here's where we have to then figure out our next step. Either we're going to use Google+, as a personal profile, or we're going to use it as a business page. Most of us are going to use it as a business page. I have my Google+, Plus personal profile, and honestly, my favorite network of all of them is Google+. Plus. I spend the most time on it for personal, I connect with people about my hobbies and topics, I have the most fun on Google+. Plus. Second place is Twitter, but after the election I'm kind of soured on Twitter. <laughs> now, <laughs> Facebook, so for all... Early in the morning, yes? No, I'm not awake at early in the morning. This is my earliest class. Um, the Facebook, full disclosure, I hate Facebook. I don't like to use Facebook for personal things. I, I'm not on Facebook. I don't share friends and family things on Facebook. I don't like it. For business, I love it. And I put aside my personal feelings for Facebook, and I use it for business, Facebook, I think, pretty well for our clients. So I never log into Facebook to keep up with friends and family. I see them in person. But Twitter and Google+, Plus, I've made a lot of great friends and connections with people all over the world that I never met in person. One of the things is, uh, one of my hobbies is uh, comic books. I've been reading and collecting comics for 30 years. I like visiting Comic-Con. I've been going for a while. I've met people in person at Comic-Con that I met digitally first on Google+. Plus. So, full disclosure, I love Google+, Plus and I don't like as much Facebook. And Twitter is in the middle. So, but most of us will have to use or have to decide which way to use it. And for most of us is we're going to use these networks for business. So there's two ways to set ourselves up for our business here. One is do you have a business that has a physical location or do you have a business that doesn't have a physical location? And I'll show you how to set them both up. Or either or that is. We'll come back to that business.google site a little later. But either use Google Plus pages, right, business pages, uh, for a physical location or not. For the physical location, need a real address, a real address that's going to be put on the Google map. So if I'm a web designer and I do the work out of my, uh, out of my home office, I don't want my real address to be there for everyone to find and come to my house to ask me to buy a website. I'm virtual. I'm a virtual business. So we will set that up. We will see how to set that up at business.google.com. Non-physical location. So I'm a plumber and I go to people's houses. I don't have an office where I plumb. I have uh, a truck that I drive to people's locations. So non-physical location. Don't need a real address. The link to set this up on Google Plus is not obvious like it used to be, but I'll show you on both how to get to it. Let me first talk about the physical location. You've logged into Google Plus, and technically the first thing that you see is your personal profile, your personal account for friends and family. You, you probably don't want that. You want the business. Uh, I don't have it on this account, I should have showed my other account, but on the top right corner, I have an icon that I put there. You probably have the generic icon, but if I click there, oh, I do have one, Victor's Test Channel. I have a fake business that I have there for me to manage. You probably do not, because I haven't showed you how to do it yet. But this is how this works. You log in with one account, one email account, and it will say there to manage your other businesses. You don't have it yet, I'll show you how to create it. Do not click on Add Account. That is totally different. That is adding like two Gmail accounts to this. I don't want that. I want to create pages, either physical location or, you know, uh, non-physical. I have one already, but just ignore it. Let's say it's empty like most of you have. If you want to create the physical location, we'll do that one first, and then we'll do the non-physical. I'm going to open another window and I'll go to business.google.com. You can use the same window if you want or tab. But I'm just going to open another tab and go to business.google.com. <coughs> if you don't have a real location, just hold on a moment. <coughs> a 
attract new customers with your free Google listing. So Google actually, in contrast with every other network, doesn't have the same sort of boost your post or pay to reach an audience. They make their money off of other things. Twitter, you can pay to boost your tweet. Facebook, you can pay to boost your posts. Google Plus, you don't have that, but you use other th things on Google. So this is going to give you the spiel about what to do, why it's so great, reviews, engage, get statistics, get this data that you don't see from the personal account, that we wouldn't need for the personal account. Facebook and Google Plus want a business to create a business page, not use a personal one. When we get to Facebook, this always happens, that people say, well, I created my account with my email, um, but I didn't go into the Facebook page creation screen. Well, you, you, you've done it wrong, actually. And worst case scenario is you're going to get shut down because these networks want you to use them the right way. We're playing in their playground and we should follow their rules. If we don't want to play by their rules in their playground, then we don't use their playground. But if we don't get on these networks, we miss a lot of audience. So from this screen, I'm going to click at the top right, Start Now. And here's this process. This is as far as I'll go because it'll ask you to fill in the name of your business, street address, and all of that, and then verify the business. What if I'm trying to fill this in for my competitor, so I put in terrible photos and bad words in the biography? Well, the way this is going to stop you from setting it up for your competitors, it's going to want to verify your location. It's going to either call your location, if you have a phone number there, or send you a postcard in the mail, in the real mail. It's going to send you a postcard with a special code to complete the registration process. Mm -hmm. This is how it tries to prevent fraud. The opposite is, what if your competitor tries to create a Google Plus page to slander you? Well, they will not have access to your mailbox when you get that postcard. This is as much as I can show, but it's self-explanatory. You fill all that in, a street address, category, address, all of that, and then it will go through further steps to verify it. Just one moment, yes. So, when you do that for, for a business, do you use a PO box for the street address, or they don't like how you to do that for a business, business PO box? No, it doesn't. Well, if it's, if it's a PO box like most of us would get at the regular post office, it wouldn't quite work, but if you've got a P.O. box at like a business park, I think that'll work. Yeah. Question? I didn't hear his question, but um, so I, my business is virtual only, mm -hmm. so this part I still hold in my street address. No. So I can use that part blank when I do this? We're going to come back because like I said, we've got a different way to go if you don't have a physical location. So if you do have a real business, uh, you fill that in, it'll put you on the map, there's a bunch of things it'll ask you and verify. Um, if you have a real physical location business, you could set it up. I still sort of recommend you don't yet, because I'm going to show you in a moment how to set up a Google Plus page for a non-physical location, a virtual business. And you can delete these things. So like Twitter. I recommended last week. If you have an, a, a Twitter account, we can use it. If you don't have a Twitter, let's create one and let's make it fake. Let's just learn how to use Twitter and then use it for real later. I'm going to recommend in a moment, let's just create a fake Google Plus account. Learn how it works. Once we kind of understand it, use it on our real account. But before I leave the screen, this is one of the spots where you can go to find the help. On the top left corner, the menu here, as support is one of the best ways to find the real phone number to call someone with Google Plus even if you've got a virtual business you go up to the little menu here support uh, need more help and it's gonna be I guess they changed it uh, where did I see it it's supposed to be help yeah, it used to be right away there. Hmm. I've got to look for it, but it's going to be under help here. A phone call from Google. Um, 
Wasn't there a phone number on that first page that you went to? Was there? Oh no, well that was uh, that was sort of that very first page that I showed was a phone number to sort of talk to their marketing team uh -huh. to kind of help you set up your best marketing account. But if I want help, it's on a different phone number somewhere here. So I have to find it, but it used to be right here, and they change these networks all the time. I should have checked before class. But it used to be in the help, there was a button down here that says set up a phone call. It's probably in there somewhere, but we'll get back to it. So either you're going to uh, go through this business.google screen, or if you've got a virtual business, on this first intro screen that I saw on the left menu, Google for your brand. So a brand is a listing on Google Plus that is virtual with no physical location. Looks like it's plus.com slash brand. So just to make our notes complete, plus.google.com slash brand. Mm -hmm. So there's a process that I cannot go through step by step because not everyone is on the same boat of, do, of setting up your real location. And there's one of virtual. This is the one I will go through because this is the one I recommend everyone create right now. Even if you do have a business on Main Street, this can be deleted. But I want us to all be able to create something right now without struggling too much so that we can use Google Plus to see how it could be effective for you. We'll click down at the bottom left there. It's really small letters, but you'll see Google Plus for your brand. So again, it'll tell you what's so great about it. Okay, nice. Click Create Google Plus page. If you already have a brand account, you can enable a Google Plus page. So you can go back there, but we're creating a new one. Go off to learn even more. Brand account name. So I'm going to make up Victor's Bakery. Yes. Can I have both a brand account and a Google Plus page? I think, I think you can. Uh, one might be more valuable than the other. Uh, you have to decide, and we can talk a little one on one to see which would be best for you. Yes. How did you get to the brand? Website. On the bottom left there, click Google Plus for your brand. On the first page. Mm -hmm. So here we can make up a business or a brand. It doesn't matter. We, will be, we can delete it later. It will not be linked to your other account. This is just something to create to learn it in class. I'll click Create. In my case, it may be asking for a phone number to verify. I'm going to have it give me a quick text call. This is trying to prevent spam because it's so easy because these are free. Anyone create an, can create an account, even a spammer. So I will put in my phone number to get a quick phone call to verify. This is not going to... This is not going to be your... We're not, we're not going to get, um, you know, telemarketers calling us if you put your number here. I've used this for years and for businesses for years, and I've never had that trouble. So if you don't want to proceed from here, that's fine. You can do it at home. But I'm going to have them give me a quick call to confirm that I'm a real person and not a spammer. So I can verify and, and go on. Do this. Can we delete everything? Yeah. We can. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. yeah. So all of this that I'm doing, yes, it can be deleted. I've. I think there's an error. 
this may happen also about what what I what happened on Twitter that if everyone's trying to do it at once it may not fully work so you might have to do it at home so I did manage to create it enable and just give me a like a welcome message so again if it doesn't quite work I can't do anything about it. I don't work for Google. You'll have to do it at home, but it often happens in these classes. Eventually an error or it says try again later just because a lot of us may be trying to set it up at once. Um, so if it didn't let you create your brand page, you can still use this personal one. We can delete all of this later. So if you still want to do something, but it didn't let you create the brand page like me, use this personal one temporarily. I'm going to talk about the anatomy of what the Google Plus screen looks like and then tangibly how to use it because again the whole point of this like Twitter or any network is well I I don't want to talk to people about cats. I want to get customers. I want to build an audience followers. So first, to kind of understand what Google Plus is, we look at, in general, here the, the anatomy of the screens. I'm going to write the notes here. Left menu. Home, where you see the posts of who you follow. Just like the other networks, like Twitter, I can follow accounts on Google Plus as a person or as a business. My business can follow other accounts like people, and I will see what they post. I've chosen to see what they're posting. The problem, like also with Twitter, is you don't really want to just follow, follow, follow everyone because then you're going to see what they're posting. If they're mostly posting on things that you don't like or are not useful to you or are offensive, well, why would you follow them? Don't follow them follow accounts that, of content you want to see. Collections, groups of your, no, we'll say collections, oh, that is collections, uh, bundles, the words are so generic again here also, bundles of your content, your posts. If I'm posting a lot, let's say Victor's Bakery, I am posting lots of images uh, about cookies and cupcakes and birthday cakes. I can create a collection all about cakes. So every cake photo that I publish is going to be collected into a cake collection. Every cookie <coughs> is grouped into a cookie collection. I'll show in detail the value of that in a moment, but collections are groups or bundles of your content. Communities, places where people congregate on a topic. So the millions of people, uh, the hundreds of millions of people on Google Plus they can congregate together on a topic, like a classic bulletin board, or groups over on Facebook. We'll see how those work and how to use them for your business in a moment. But this is where people come together on a topic. Profile. Your account, biography. Google Plus. Your location, your address on Google Plus where you can send people to, to to follow you and such. People. Where you see who you are following or your followers. So every network has this as well. Who is following me? Who is paying attention to me? 
and who am I following? Who am I paying attention to? So that if I no longer want to follow them, I can go to that screen and choose to unfollow them. Events. Those are kind of complicated. We usually don't have time to get to them in, in the classes, but events. Uh, setting up a real or virtual get together. You can create an event that next week join us on Google Plus and we'll chat about this topic. Or join us and we'll and you'll see our video. Or here's an event. You visited the event, post your pictures of our event. It's kind of complicated to do. I usually don't do it in the class, but that's where you can set that up. Yes? On the Google Plus, how did Google offer you some people who can follow it? How it, how it find out? It finds out how to how to uh, suggest to you yeah. by the more you use it. When you use Google Plus and you share certain pictures or text, it starts to understand what your business is about, and then it's going to start to suggest these people might be useful for you to follow. So the more you use it, the more it suggests. So when you are in a personal profile, you just check what you are concentrating, theater, travel. Yes, yes, it sees what you're doing and then it figures out what might be more useful to you to connect with. It is a huge engine to concentrate it on each of the Google. It's not always perfect though. That's true, but it's not always perfect. Sometimes you get suggestions of accounts that don't make sense because it's not fully, completely perfect. Notifications is pretty obvious, just like Twitter, where you see your activity. And then settings. Check here for settings. One of the things you may want to look at at some point under settings, it, it, it might, you know, it's going to alert you, it's going to give you notifications when you got someone, when you got a follower, when someone replies, definitely on Google+. Plus. It may also send you emails letting you know, I got, a not I got a new follower, I got a reply. And you may, at one point, if you get popular, start to have too many emails. I'm getting too many emails telling me what's happening on Google+. Plus. If you go to the settings, there will be an option there to turn that off. I personally go in there and turn that off. I don't want to get emails to give me activity alerts. I, I log into Google Plus and I go to the notification screen to keep track of that. So those are the various screens at the left. Um, at the top, you also have a few elements there. Top menu. We have show and hide left menu. This, uh, these, three do these three lines here, you can click that to hide that left menu just so that you can see the content a little larger. I usually leave it on all the time because I jump between these screens often. So that's a menu there. You can click on the Google Plus logo to take you back home. That one always takes you back home as well. So if, you, if your menu is closed, you can always go back home by the Google Plus logo or click the word home. And then you've got search. So search is like Twitter as well. We'll look at that extensively in a little bit. Search. Search only in Google+. That's not a search to search all over the web. Just like Twitter. Twitter has a search, but it's only searching inside of Twitter. Facebook has a search box, but that's only searching inside Facebook. If you want to search all over the world, all over the internet, you go to a search engine. Google.com, Bing.com, Yahoo.com, right? You go to a search engine that searches all over the world. These networks have a search that only search in their network. That's not bad. It's just remember that. You're only searching inside of the network. So here, if you search just searching inside the Google Plus mm -hmm. that you are connected or all the Google Plus 
everything on Google Plus. Nothing connected with you. No. What do you mean connected with you? I mean not in your circle. Not exactly. No. Everywhere on Google Plus. If you wanted to search only your circles connections, you can do that, but this search is all over Google Plus. Next we've got icons up here, and this seems to be different for different people. But these nine dots here, it's showing me a quick way to jump over to my Google+, my YouTube, my photos. Eventually, if you take more of, our, more of the classes in the sequence, we will have a day where we talk about YouTube. YouTube is part of the Google Plus family. YouTube is a social network. You may not think about it that way, but Google has, YouTube has a way to post something, a video. It has a way to comment, a way to like, a way to share, like every social network. So we'll cover YouTube as a social network for your business eventually. You get a little bell here, which is just another screen, a quick way to show notifications. A little number will appear there as activity happens. You know, if there's a number one there, something happened. I got maybe one like, I got one follow, I got something. And these numbers increase to show you activity. And then you've got your icon or logo there, which you can use to switch between other accounts or businesses. So now you probably will see the original personal account and the current business. And in my case, I had another one that I set up so I can jump to it. Let's search. probably has some sort of official name. What is that thing? Google Apps. Google Apps icon to jump to different services, notifications, bell, uh, another notifications view, and your icon, switch accounts, sign out. So every network has these different sorts of things. You know, now you're probably a pro at Facebook, but when you first saw Facebook, it's like, what are all of these buttons and panels and stuff? And when people come into every other network, like, I, Twitter's confusing. Uh, Google Plus is confusing. Well, they're all confusing when you've never used them. Once you start to use them and get the general layout, the general anatomy of it, then you'll see how it works and how it works for you. Wherever you're at here, let's click on the Home button. I just created this account, but I already see stuff. I already see things being published. I never followed these people. Why am I seeing these things? Well, it's showing me, if you see, trending yeah. on Google+. This is what people are writing about, trending. Instead of it showing you an empty screen like it used to a couple of years ago, it actually shows you stuff. A complaint that people had was, well, I don't like Google+, Plus. it's a ghost town. I don't see anything. Well, of course you don't see anything. You didn't follow anyone. You say, I don't like Google+, Plus. my friends aren't there. Well, of course they're not there. They're on Facebook or Twitter. But the thing is, you don't want to think about bringing your friends and, and family and all of that over to Google+, Plus or Twitter. They're fine on Facebook. They're fine on Pinterest. It's very hard to convince people, come to this network. Don't worry about that. You're going to find an audience in the network because are you going to build your business on the backs of your friends and family? You know, are you going to keep advertising to your friends over and over? Are you going to say, come on, join me on Google Plus? And all that you're doing there is putting out posts about buy this, buy that, hire me. Why would they follow that? They're perfectly fine on Facebook. So Google Plus shows you stuff that's happening. Android Authority posted this publicly four hours ago. Sean McClure posted this two hours ago. Neuroscience News posted this three hours ago. It's kind of showing random content at the moment until you start to use it, and then it'll show you content more relevant to you. On most screens, I have a little pencil on the corner there to post something. It's the same over here. What's new with you? So I have a way to post, to share, to Google+. Plus. Let's check this out a moment, because there's slight differences from the other networks. I'm on the home screen, and I'll click the little box, what's new. 
it opens up. I'm about to post this publicly, which we can change, and I'll look at that in a moment. And I've got a box for me to write whatever I want. I'm not limited to 140 characters. I can write however much I want. All of that. People will not read that. But I can write as much as I want. And that's, a, that's a, something that I would mention actually for all networks. Most networks are short attention spans. post a preview, a snippet, a piece of the long article you wrote with a link to the longer one. Let's say I'm a blogger. In my opinions, I, I'm writing on a, on a blog about my opinions and I want people to read it. I'm not trying to sell anything, I just want people to read my opinions. But maybe I do want people to say, great job, but I want people to read my opinions. I'm not going to write the whole 500 words on a Google Plus post. I could, but I shouldn't. I'm not going to write the whole 500 words on Facebook. I could, but I shouldn't. I can't write the whole 500 words on Twitter. I only have 140 characters. So I always want to think in terms about having a little preview, a little snippet, and I'll show you how in a moment, and then a link to the longer article. If they choose to read the whole thing, they will follow it. You don't want to force a big wall of text on people. They're going to unfollow you, or they're going to ignore you. Yes? And also you can add video as rich as volume. Yeah, exactly. You can make... On Twitter, you have limitation of... On Twitter, it's like one minute videos. One minute yeah. Maximum, but also mm -hmm. Instagram about. Exactly. Those networks, Twitter and Instagram, have short videos, but because Google Plus is linked to YouTube, you can upload a video of three hours. What is this uh, icon on the bottom? I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about all the icons. So here uh, I can write text. Thinking again in terms about Twitter, uh, start with like open-ended questions and such. Uh, you know, if I'm Victor's Baker, I'm about to put something like, um, "We just started Google Plus." That's a bad tweet. A post, I mean. Um, I teach this class here at North City, and I also teach it at Southwestern College. At Southwestern College, it is a credit class, and I give homework. So I do grade students on, on their tweets and their Google Plus posts and all of that. Here, you're lucky. You don't get grades. <laughs> but that would be a nice C grade. D plus, maybe. Um, this has no value to current followers or potential followers. Right now, potential followers. I have zero followers. I just created the account. A better tweet or post on Google Plus or any network is also to always think about sharing what's in it for them. Why would they follow you? Why would they like it? Why would they reshare it? And that's hard to always think and figure out. And that's hard to teach to a class of so many varied interests. What I would say is, I just started Google Plus. Follow us for exclusive coupons. Some enticement for the follows. Uh, I might share certain things on Google Plus that I don't share on Facebook. People ask, well, I already have 100 followers on Facebook. How do I get them over to Google Plus? Most likely you're not. Don't try. If they're following you on Facebook, they want to be on Facebook. They don't want to be elsewhere. They don't know how to be elsewhere. You don't want to teach someone to use Google Plus just to follow you. Focus on, their, on them following you on Facebook. This is to try to reach the audience that's already here on Google Plus. Same thing if I write here, I'm going to put a, post a coupon on Google Plus. I'm not going to post that same coupon, coupon on Facebook, maybe. You can decide that. but you need to put, post content on these networks to entice people. That's better. That would be an A, even something simple as that. That would be an A if I was doing a grade, because it's not just, here we are on Facebook, here we are on Google+, who cares? No, here we are, follow us. You'll get something out of it. To make it stand out, 
unlike the other networks, we have a way to add bold and italics. You can only write plain text on Twitter. On Facebook, you can do some styling, but in a certain way, which we'll see next week. On Google+, we have a way to style our text. It's not intuitive, so I'll explain it like this. Asterisks equals bold. Underscores equals italics. Dashes or hyphens equal strike through. These are the three styles we have. These styles will activate once I post it, once I publish it. But if I wrap asterisks around a word or a sentence, it will become bold when I post it. Let me just post it to show you. Oh no, everyone's going to see it on Google+. Well, that's fine. It's a fake account. Asterisks became bold. Underscores became italics. Dashes became strike through. Well, if I told you that secret that no one else knows, then that probably means everything that I'm going to write, I'm going to make it bold to stand out, right? The purpose of bold and italics and all of that is to make something stand out. When everything is bold, when everything is italics, nothing stands out. <clears throat> Use the styling on Google Plus carefully. See what I did there? I've made some of the words stand out, not the whole sentence. Now that stands out. If I have all my paragraph bold, it's gonna it's gonna become white noise for people. They're not gonna notice it. Look at how Sean did it over here. He did it the right way, like I like I showed you. He bolded this part right here that stands out. Wrote some stuff. Picture. Android Authority didn't do it like that. It all looks kind of the same. I can stop and read it, but that caught my attention. So think about adding styling judiciously. Google Plus has some basic styling. Asterisks bold underscore equals italics and then dash. I hardly ever use this one. Strike through. You see that it made a dash or it made a strike through your text like this. So I don't find too much of a purpose for that usually. You can probably figure out a purpose. Sometimes people use this like they wrote something they went back and edited their message, their own message, and then they crossed out what they changed. So usually the bold and the italics is what most people use. The first icon is to add a picture or a video. I can upload a picture of a video. I can upload 50 pictures if I want. Twitter is limited to four pictures. Facebook, I don't think, has a limit, and Google Plus has no limit. So you can put as many pictures as you want of a product. You know, I could say sale this Sunday on our cupcakes and have three pictures of tasty cupcakes to have people buy. So think about in terms of what kind of picture can you add to your text. Text doesn't work as much as pictures. Studies show you get better results on social media when there's some picture. An interesting picture, a funny picture, an inspirational picture. If you get the examples of what's trending, that's a nice picture. That's just someone that got really close to a flower and took a photo. At least I stopped to look at it. And then I can read what they wrote here. That's a picture, microscopic, all of that. Beats, diabetic foods, list of 15 foods. So that takes much more effort. That's not really a picture. That's a little bit of a design. It's a graphic where they put each of the photos and then a text. So that takes more effort.
but that catches my attention. I read the article, I am interested on that. I'll click the article to then go read the whole thing. They did what I said, a little preview, it's clickable, and then it goes to read the whole article. This next one is a link. This is really cool because this will let you share a link from a website and it'll create a preview of it. That's most likely the way that they did this one. Uh, this one here. It's a link to a website but with a preview. So the way this works is you need the link of a website. So I've got an example website. This is going to create a preview and make a link to that website. The better way to use this is a link to a specific page on your website. Over at this website, bmcinc.net, there's a bunch of articles. I want to drive traffic to this website, yes, but I'm going to try to drive traffic to a specific article. Here's an article on how to record a podcast. I want to get traffic to this page. So this is the link that I need. You need to copy and paste the landing page. You need to copy and paste a direct link on your website. That is better than simply linking to the home page of your website. So instead of that, I'm adding the, the landing page clicking on that, it'll scan it, it found the picture, it created a little snippet, and I can simply post it. Now when people, if people follow me, this doesn't relate to Victor's Bakery, but when they follow me, they would see this, a picture that stands out, the headline of how to record a podcast, maybe they'll click, and that goes back to my website. Posting. Think about adding more than just the text. Add one or more photos about the text. Add one, you can only add one link to drive traffic to your site. The next one is kind of fun. Add a poll with up to five choices. Twitter has polls as well, but the Google Plus polls are way better. We didn't talk too much about it on Twitter, but on Twitter you can ask a question and people can answer your poll. You have, I think, either four or five choices, and you have a time limit, up to seven days, I believe. On Google Plus you have no time limit. You can keep the poll open as long as you want. You have five choices, but also you can add pictures to each choice. On Twitter you can't. You ask the poll and that's it. No pictures, no links, nothing extra. Let's say here then I'm going to post something and I choose the poll. I can add at least one image and some choices. Let's say Victor's Bakery. I'm going to ask the question, what's your favorite chocolate chip? Or what's your favorite cookie? Chocolate chip. Oatmeal. What other kinds of cookies are there? Raisin. Let's say three. So, what's your favorite type of cookie? These are the three possibilities, and I can add a picture to each one of these. Sorry about the way. You, when did it give you the opportunity to put the picture in? In a couple of ways. When when I add the poll, here's the little icon to add a picture. Okay. So I can upload a picture. Or after I have started to set it up, I can go back to the pencil, and then I can click on each one of these to add a picture. Oh. Thank you. 
So here is a question that I could ask all my followers. All those that have chosen to follow me could see this and they could click. And this is the point of this is to get feedback from the customers. This is to help me decide what to post on social networks, on Google Plus, what are people into, so that I can get a result. I have zero followers, so I'm probably going to get zero votes. But I'm just trying to vary or change up the different kinds of posts that I make. I also have location. If I choose to set this one up, it's going to ask me to allow the location. It'll find me locations that I can attach. This one isn't that useful for most people, but let's say I'm Victor's Bakery, we do catering and I'm sharing that we're at the, the Hilton and we're doing a catering event. So I can post, today we're at the Hilton, come join us. And this will attach a map. Again, not for a lot of people is this very valuable, but you can attach a location and then a picture or a poll and such and people can get the driving directions to go visit you. So just like Twitter, remind me, how many did I recommend, how many posts did I recommend before trying to build an audience? Three to five. Here I've already posted a few but I want to make some posts out to no one. I want to make my posts public. Everyone can see them, three to five of them, before I try to build an audience. On Twitter, I said I, I need to post the minimal amount, but I also need to do something else on Twitter before starting to build an audience. What was that other thing I said? My uh, profile is very basic. Right now, my business is a generic person generic icons. So on your own, you would go look at the profile screen and edit your profile to put in your biography, your graphics, your logo. So just like on Twitter, you want to have a, an account that's been completed. You want to have three to five posts before trying to build followers. We're going to take our second break and then after that we'll see examples of how to get followers on Google+. It's 11.45, we'll take a break until 11.55, and then we'll go on.